Welcome everybody. Uh, in this talk we will see the Python Qt or PyQt, Qt depends of the accent they pronounce. But yeah, this API for interfaces in with Python. So let's start to talk. Um, I'm Daniele Scasciafratte from Italy. I'm here with the Italian Hacker Embassy. And uh, I have a web agency room, but uh, we work mainly with WordPress stuff. But yeah, I'm also a Mozilla Vlogia. I've done the talk before about Firefox developer tools. But I'm involved in too many things. And also for works, we are starting right now to use Internet of Things for stuff. But in the past year, I already developed with Python Qt. Now we will see what we can do very, very quickly and very simple. So when I started to use Linux uh, like a few years ago, switched from Windows using .NET, this horrible stuff also today are horrible. But uh, when I switched, I was doing high school and uh, I was developing application softwares. So uh, when I arrived to Linux, I said, oh, it's, it's amazing. You can do everything you want. The problem is that you need to know what you want to do and how, because you can break everything. So uh, this was me when I started Linux. I was uh, 19 when I switched to Linux as daily. Now I have everywhere. But this was me. So when I want to do the same things on Windows, I so I want to do software with interface, also Linux. And at the timing, the time was very difficult and not so much simple like with Visual Basic and the, this kind of tool. Now it's different, but the time was very difficult to start because uh, the documentation, the interface, we know like 10 years ago, the interface of Linux was like difficult or horrible and now it's completely different. But the moment was, I have an idea, how can I do what I want to do? So. I chose to learn Python only because I was using KDE, like right now, I love KDE. And uh, I, cho uh, I usually buy a book, read all the book, and start to develop. So there was only this book about Qt in Python because I'm not C++ developer like right now after this year, because I'm poor web developer. So I discovered Python using this book. And it's the only book uh, like also today uh, but it's very, very interesting because the API of Qt is not changed so much, but the fundamentals are the same. And it was a huge book. And uh, was interesting because when I saw Python, I said, no, for me it's too much because from Visual Basic and after years of PHP and JavaScript, I said, no, there are no braces, there is the dentation, oh my God, it's impossible to use. I hate Python. After years, I continue to dislike Python for that, but I think it's very, very powerful and very easy to do. You need only to accept that. <laughs> but we will improve your code quality very quickly. So I, my choice of Python was only because I love Qt, I want to do something with that. And it's strange because one, well, someone chose a language because it's bad, it's new, it's amazing. He said, no, I chose them only for interface. It's very strange. And Python, I tried to explain, I can explain Python to a public of hacker. It's, I think everywhere, everywhere in here use Python, so it was not easy. So I use the meme way, sometimes it works, sometimes. And uh, uh, I said, okay, hackers want to see code, want to see a workshop demo, want to see in action. So this is my portfolio of Qt interface public, open source, we can say that way, of stuff. And, uh, and now, uh, today we will see the boilerplate, but I've done few interface with uh, PyQt in the time, with four, and when I chose to do this talk, uh, I never used uh, uh, Qt5. So I say, oh my god, uh, I have to, I, uh, I uh, applied for a talk without knowing what to do, uh, again. So, um, I studied a little bit, I see that all my old code works also with Qt5. So it was a little surprise. And uh, the cool part of Qt is that usually it's very, very easy to start, especially in Python because there is no compiler stuff, etc. So it's more fast, of course. And uh, so I chosen to do screen right now. This is uh, Qt Designer. The results on GT, uh, GTK is uh, Glade, Glade uh, I don't remember the name. And 
And when I saw this, when I switched from Visual Studio at the time, I said, okay, it's like Visual Studio, so I know what to do. And it's more easy, I think, of Visual Studio. These are three interfaces of my old tool in Qt4, in Qt Creator 5, for 5 because uh, the cool part of Qt that you can have right now with Qt5, you have different way to do an interface. Usually in uh, Qt, you have three, uh, now you have three way. You can do the interface and save a UI file that is an XML file. So it's a standard. So you can have the same interface during the year that works because it's the same file. And this is very important because as you can see after year, the interface is always rendered the same way because it's a standard. And this is important, very, very important. Because I can imagine what means to work in legacy stuff the worst ever. So uh, you can do a UI file, but this is an XML file. And when you're developing with every language, it's important to have autocomplete, other stuff. So the cool part that UI file in Python, in that case, can be compiled as code. Because Qt, of course, interpret, uh, elaborate, uh, parse the XML file and generate something inside. But we can convert this XML file as Python code. In that way, our editor can use this code as base for autocomplete, syntax lighting. So it's more quickly to do. So usually my workflow is to create an interface right here. This is Qt Designer on Debian Seed. Is here. You can install, open your file, do your interface, because it's important for me always do the interface and next do the code. Because that way, can, well, while I develop the interface, I say, okay, I need this feature, this, this, this. Develop, save the file, because once I define the file, I don't want to edit again the interface. So I can compile as Python code. So, as you can see, there is the command line that is the same for Qt4 and Qt5. So it's the same command, change the value, the number, and you can compile as Python code, poor Python code. As I can say, better integration with editor, because actually Qt Creator can save Python file, but it's not auto-completing other stuff. So you have to use other tool to develop with PyQt. So it's better to have Python code. And of course, it's better to read uh, uh, respect a uh, XML file because it can be verbose, long file, etc. A Python code is more easy to read and understand what is happening because uh, the second way is to write directly the Python code instead of use Qt Creator. But we are developers, we are hackers, but sometimes an interface, also to create interface, is more quickly fast. So I suggest to use this way because uh, you can do whatever you want. Right now with Qt5, there is QML. It is another language that we, I don't really show this talk because I think it's too much to see for an introduction talk because what is the difference between Qt and QML? Qt use is chip plus plus code interpreted blah, 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 and generate interface. QML is running with OpenGL. So the interface is the same you can co use the same interface running under OpenGL, so it's more performance. So, and it's another standard, it's uh, json based and then uh, can have inline JavaScript code. So it's completely different, but it's more performance. So right now with QML, you can do more cool things. But it's another step. It's better to start with a simple one, because usually, as we show, it's better to have a little UI for what do you need. So. It's time to see where to start. For my development, I created my simple, very simple boilerplate for develop. It's on GitHub. Uh, I have to try to open it now. And uh, I've done uh, for this talk two versions, the Qt4 version and the Qt5 version. It's the same, I only changed the import. So <laughs> it's very, very easy. And uh, the cool part of compiling that for PyQt4 there is an interface. There is an interface where you can do the folder and automatically convert the file for PyQt5. I've done the same also a bash script file because it's more fast. But yeah, we can do it also this. So 
I open a PQt5 file. I use a Python editor written with Qt. It's an exception, but the part of this work. So this is, uh, of course, PyQt works Python 2 and Python 3. There are differences, of course, because uh, we know the cool part of Python 3 is the support of Unicode. But Qt is a, a big framework and support Unicode. So the difference between Python 2 and Python 3 is that natively in Python 3, we use the Python Unicode system. So we use the native Python stuff for Unicode. With Python 2, we use the Qt framework stuff for Unicode. So this is the mainly difference between the 3 and 2 version with PyQt 4 and 5. This is uh, the most problem. For that reason, I started to develop in poor Python 3 to avoid any confusion, because, of course, it's a poor standard Python, so we can use also other libraries and frameworks without problems. So what we do? We have need, of course, the PyQt soft, uh, library standard. It's the basics, but it's better to remember. We import the Qt core, that is our, the core framework. We need to. Uh, don't forget that Qt is not all interface. Qt has process stuff, file watcher, and many other things. So it's, I think it's not so much a framework, but a huge framework is the right term, because you can do it in poor Qt, everything you need, as I saw in the past years. So you can see that you don't need often other library. Qt UI, uh, guy is the interface, of course, all the elements of the interface. Widgets are the components of the interface that we can have here in the designer. These are widgets. And of course, you can have widgets, custom widgets. We have here from KDE, but you can develop your own. Oh, wrong. OK. So you need only these three lines to get working, equity, script, software, whatever. I add this one because are more useful right now, and we will see why. When we uh, develop, develop, design the interface with Qt Creator, uh, we get uh, the file name. Usually, uh, I, the standard one is main window because it's the main window, of course. So as you can see, ah, wrong desktop again. We have main window with all the elements right here. And we can have here all the attributes of the element. One of the cool parts right here in this demo that I opened it, the spatial, in that way support the size of the window without breaking everything. And we can change everything we want. So in Python, we will use this. This is the name of the, the element, label choo choo choo, spin box choo, whatever. Mm, OK. So we take this RIA file, we compile in Python to import, we'll do in that way, like as usual class in Python, because this is poor Python code at the end. So we can create a class, we import the object, we import the new class of need, and we used one of the most cool, most used, I guess, feature of Qt, uh, settings class to save our settings. In the, uh, how works this? Depends on the first system, put the config file like that automatically is created. So we doesn't care about what is the path, because Qt will do for us. In Linux, is your own folder, slash config, your name, and the name of the software, .ini. And you can also use different format file Qt will do automatically for you. The ini is the, star, the default, but works. This is important. So in that way, automatically, we create the Qt, Q settings class uh, object, as you want. And we init the class. We are developed. We already know this part. but. We init the window. In other way, load everything. Load the UI. This command initializes the Y, and we assign to an object. Yes? Can you zoom in one more time? Oh, yeah. yeah. OK. And uh, we created the object. We initialize the object. We assign this object in the class because uh, it's comfortable to have in the class, of course. And set up the object in that way is assigned. The, we can, that way we can write the title of the, pay, the window. Very simple. This is, we will see now this what is. And we show the window. In that way, we 
show it the window very quickly. The important, it's very easy. For initialize, I use this way, but of course there are many ways to initialize a class in Python. The cool part of Python is that you can do the same things in too much way. So this is one of the way. We created a query application that we can uh, intercept the uh, uh, parameter we can send from command line. And uh, we initialize the window, set up, exit. The exit is for close the window, but not to close the process. This is important to notice, and now we will see why. Because that way we close when click the cross of the window. Automatically it's closed with this command. But we have an interface. We have only show the interface and the code without talk with each other. This is the problem. Also with the web, we can do it, an interface and we can add events or stuff. How we can do it in Qt? There is the slot a signal way. And for me, when I switched from Windows, it was kind of strange to understand how it works because there are, uh, the standard inside Qt changed at different time. Now with Qt5, there is another way more simple, but I prefer this one because for me it's the most simple. And I will see how it works. This is a slot and a signal in the same line. <laughs> what we have, self UI, this is the window, very simple. We have the button, new question button. Clicked is the action. So every widget has his action. So we don't have, uh, uh, the best way to find is the Qt documentation. That is automatically generated. You can use also the C++ code. For me, that, that thing came from web stuff. When I have to find something to do with PyQt, it's difficult to find the Stack Overflow or other project or tutorial, whatever. But for C++, there is too much documentation tutorial. And you, can, you need only to convert the uh, um, syntax for Python. So you can, use the same, you can use the same snippet for C in Python without problem. And this is important because the documentation, the API is the same between the languages. It's not changing. So we, can, we ask for the event click, the action click. We can have double, blah, blah, blah. Every widget has its own uh, uh, signal. We connect to this and we leave a callback like we do with the web. We say that when you click, you need to run self new question. This is a slot and signal. So this is important because that way we can, uh, like Python is important because you can, uh, you, need, you are forced to write readable code because we don't have braces. So we can uh, structure with classes, uh, uh, object, blah, blah, blah. So in that way we can create a function that we can use different times in different buttons, uh, whatever, with the, all the same method. We don't have to create duplication, uh, etc. Or we can ignore, in that case, the button that ex uh, execute the action. So the signal is the action that is happening. And the slot is the callback. Pretty easy. We need only to remember this API and look at the documentation what are the action of the widgets. For that reason, it's better to develop, to develop excuse me, design the interface, because that way we can use all the widgets that we want, and next we can take care of the extra that we need, because we can start to develop code without thinking the interface will be a mess. We will use lost so much time. So it's better to develop, use the widgets that we want, do the interface, save, compile, and run in Python. Well, OK. So we saw the signal. And here we have a signal. But it's not using a uh, Qt's element, widget, class, whatever. The problem is that usually, also for development, we run a script from the command line. And when we create a Python script with Qt from command line, when you use the control C to close the process, it's not closing. Because there is no support in this Python script to react of this action on the command line. So this single line with single, say when uh, there is the signal of interruption from command line, close it, the process. So in that way, we can force the closing of the script from the command line. And also we will see in the official example of PyQt, this line is missing, so it cannot close from command line. But this is helpful also for development or for people that run stuff with the scripts uh, or whatever. So it's very important to add this line. For that reason, I this is mainly reason why I created the boilerplate, to remember this code. 
but also for the queue settings part because queue settings is like for local storage on the web you have get and set value so it's very quickly so this is the boilerplate as you can see you I can create right now an interface put on the script that in the boilerplate and run I will show an example with my one uh, I don't remember they have a PyQt interface Nope, but I think that I can use one of the example. Mm, 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 mm. No. The cool part of live coding that you remember where there are the files. But I have, I for remember I have done. I open another the same file. I save as main window. I have no idea where I save it, of course. In the wrong folder. Now I have to compile the file. I don't remember the scripts of work. Yep. I compiled the file as Python code. I open this window, as you can see, is poor XML, horrible to read, but it's working and it is standard at the time. And we have here the Python code auto compiled from the XML file with all the names so we can use also this code. Now we have the file with the name and if it works now, I click here, we will start. Seems not. We will see now right now why. <laughs> no, I've written wrong uh, in camera case the name of the window. Python use this. EQT use this standard. The last word is uh, on uppercase, the other one not. Again, there is something that is not working. I got it why. Uh, wrong name of the file and of the object. But you can change, of course, the name. This is my boilerplate, I don't remember what I done the boilerplate. What? Okay, we can ignore this part. <laughs> uh, we're sure running already an interface already compiled. Okay, this is the UI you saw in the Qt Designer running. We have the UI file compiled in PyCode uh, running. This is uh, the official example of Qt on GitHub. There are too many. I will show to you a few of them. And this is interface. So. And uh, because uh, Qt support, as you can see, I cannot try to cover. Usually, this is one of the problems of interface uh, on desktop. With Qt, you can use a widget to avoid this action. But you can support also resides of the element based on the interface itself. So you can go bigger, uh, little. I only to configure on the Qt designer, compile, I done. So, it's like the end because I don't want to talk about so much about two hackers, how it works. I want to show it to you demo of Qt can do for you. Because this is what you need to do to use Qt. The only problem is you have to add the idea, the idea to do an application with the interface. Because the Qt elements are very powerful and you can do everything you want. So, the example re uh, repo on PyQt on GitHub has few uh, uh, example I can show to you this is poor QT mainly to do the action we need only really to do the Python code that intercept these kind of things and this code 
it's more it's more the comment about the license than the code on Python, I think. But as you can see, we have only the here is the sign in the interface in poor Python. Reference to the file. The enter event. Drop event. Mouse enter event around the application. It's very, very easy because the most boring part are by QT framework. We have a look to see the side, the interface, what is the interface, and how to uh, interact with the interface. But I think that uh, there was uh, uh, one of the uh, most last feature of QT is the widgets of OpenGL that use the JavaScript interface. So you can do an open WebGL demo running in PyQt with the, a widget. I think, think that right now there is the support in PyQt, but I think they will be arrive very soon. But uh, uh, there was uh, OpenGL. This is uh, the same running with different engine. I don't think there is so much different for the, this. The HD part, but as you can see, our fluid all both. But now this is not running. Maybe I'm not running right in the right way. But uh, the cool part that you can find uh, uh, these elements are pretty easy. One of the cool parts of Qt that you can define in Qt Designer the hot key, and you can ac assign automatically with a slot. So you can do very quickly assign the same method to do. Yes? Can you also like, uh, compile the file to ELF and take it to another computer and work? Yeah, you can. Python is Python. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can um, um, move the Python file. It's only a conversion. Yeah, I mean, like, like, uh, like in Windows, you can apply to exec. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, can you do the whole thing with the, the QT engine? Uh, I think I, I never done because I use mainly Linux, but I saw example of this kind of stuff. The problem that I think Qt on Windows is more difficult to install all the framework because Qt are very heavy as sides. So I know there are different ways to get only the library that you need also for Windows and not to install all the package. Like, like, like let's say that I develop something, I want to give it to a friend or whatever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, don't take the source code and like, build it at that moment, like, take the yeah, yeah, I know. I saw example. Uh, there was for Python Qt4. I saw also a tool that will automatically do for you. I don't know there is in the meantime also for five, but there are also stuff for Windows. So Windows is supported. <laughs> and uh, the, all these parts here are pretty easy to do. I've done uh, list view with the checkbox in the list view, only hacking with pipe Qt code uh, in poor Python. Yes. Yeah, I I voted this part, but you can also have. Um, there are people that run in PyQt also on Android, so you can also do it that way. But for Android, uh, I don't think it is best so much good to have Python uh, that use Qt that use running in a Java system. Maybe it's better to use C++ Qt that is poor compiled uh, specifically for Android is better also for performance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do it callback like, in the same way with slot the signal. So all the media widgets as action, and you give a callback also the same to different elements, is automatically done. Like, maybe I push a button and the response is an instant. Yeah, you can do it also this. You, there are too many <laughs> widgets and classes. I don't need show because I think that it's a better way is to try to do, and you can find the documentation. In my um, talk, uh, as all the list of my application open source, there are Links, I can open a few of them. Because there was issues with Wi-Fi yesterday, I cannot do all of them when I prepared the talk. <laughs> and uh, this is an example, is an interface for Asana that we've done in PyQt. Uh, Py As you can see, this is poor PyQt, there is the code here. There is a Python code compiler, the interface, and the Python code using a library. We have uh, different element. And uh, this is connected, of course, with Asana. Asana is a, web a, serv a service for uh, to-do list. Simple, easy. In that way, I can filter call the API and in create the interface with checklist automatically, update the interface, the information, settings, open a new window of PyQt to put the APK code. 
and it's pure Python. And uh, you can also create a new task. This is pure Python code, PyQt code. But uh, I think that this uh, this is I think the most interesting stuff that I done. Uh, of it's old but works to go, continue to works. I hope they have a screen. Yes. Because uh, I don't remember the hot key, when I started to develop PQT, I have developed this tool. It's a, like a quiz tool written in PQT that uh, asks you two questions, parse XML file, asks you two questions. Do you remember what is the key? Try to, under to guess what is the hot key. But for me, it was boring because uh, developers for hot key want also uh, shit, shit. So I created an interface to, uh, I w it's better to download and try it. I hope that it works because uh, the last time that I tried was uh, a little while ago. So, uh, what is the file? There aren't the case. Ah, it's missing the Qt WebKit uh, library. Okay. Uh, in any case, uh, I created an interface in poor PyQt that can uh, create the, sh the XML file that I'm reading. So automatically create on the fly new element of the interface uh, and in poor here, just save a HTML file that open in a preview window, poor in PyQt. And the code, uh, you can try it at home uh, or right here, what do, but this Ready here. Those are a poor example. This one is an interface for a less compiler. This is a language that's compiled in CSS. It's quite old, but I know people that are using. As you can, this use a file watcher to see when there are new files in poor Q, Qt. Use the so use the Qt framework for file watcher. So I don't use uh, script or the stuff and run a process inside the computer. And in the past, uh, I've done also an interface. I don't know its work again because it was a, a prototype and there are no screen. Also show the output of the console inside the interface because it was a, a tool uh, interface for Nmap and other tools never finished. A print in the interface, what is happening inside uh, with the command. So in PurQt, you can do it, all these kind of things. I uh, done also a uh, few years ago to promote Qt. A uh, netbook in Italian, but I want to show a few parts uh, only to show the code, of course. So no worry about the Italian. <laughs> and uh, you can also do the classic message box in Qt very easily to show alerts. Is a line of code. This came from the code of Learn Hot Case, of course. There is also a way to open new window inside because the problem when you open a new window is that you have to avoid that and close the new window close the other application because uh, there are like uh, oh um parent shield there also can can conflict so there is a little trick to avoid this kind of action you can open dialogue very easily for files with a filter because qt has a huge filter for kind of these kind of things for the design interface i change the cursor for waiting a reply i put the loading cursor automatically with this line and put the, the back the old cursor this is the way i create a list of checkbox because usually no usually the native uh, list view view doesn't have the support for checkbox so you can create on the fly widget with a mix of other widgets i instance create this model of qt because we have too many things to simplify, I create a loop, and for every element, I create add a checkbox. I can add on the fly, as you can see here, a slot and a signal to an element created on the fly. So you, you can do like you do in the web pages. You can do also an interface on desktop. This is create a process inside Qt framework, so you don't need to use sub process like in Python. And you have all the events right here. So yeah, you can avoid to have different uh, libraries. So in that way, the code will be always the same because the API will be the same also. You change the PyQt version. My old application, PyQt4, continue to work right now, as which also PyQt5 continue to work. So in my suggest is to use when you can, use the Qt framework stuff because it works everywhere also after years. This is a way to create uh, autocomplete. You have uh, a method that will automatically open a uh, tooltip 
uh, or suggest to you to write the text because there is also the syntax elider widget. This is the watcher that you use in the learner not the case. Is a try waiting. Ah, op oh, to open the second window right here in another file. So you may suggest you for the for hackers developers doesn't care that doesn't fade from documentation and code as I think it's here is full. Try to do with example available from PyQt5 and see what's happening, but try also to develop an interface and try to do the first slot and signal because uh, ah, it started raining. Uh, you can get fun very quickly only trying with demos and see the interface because I think that for developers that usually use command line, it's difficult to think about an interface because it's not our job. We do script for us. But I think it's very important to try to design an interface and define what is happening when I click here. And with Python Qt, it's very simple like on the web because in the past I tried CD, uh, GTK, GTK and it was not so much easy like that. So I suggest to you to try the demo. There are, there are very too many. And I don't remember the demo because there are too many. Uh, there are not so the permission to run, but uh, ah, this is an example of address book already available. So the cool part of Python is very easy to read, also don't worry other people. So you can uh, find everything you need probably also looking on this example or look on internet with C++ uh, forums or whatever. But GitHub right now has a powerful search engine. So very often uh, I use GitHub to search other, GitHub, other open source projects to see what they, can, what they do, how they do what they need to do. So my suggestion is to look here. Uh, Q QML, it's very interesting, but I think this is required to understand this uh, new markup language. So it's better to try on your own because my, my, when I, to do this talk was only to introduce you the tools because it's, there is not so much uh, tutorials or to get started in five minutes using Qt with Python. Now you know what are the steps. So the talk is finished. For any question, I'm here. <laughs>